Ocean's 8 is a spin-off of the Ocean's trilogy and boasts an unbelievably talented, badass cast of actresses. I'm Jacob with Cinematica, and to build on the momentum of this fun, fast-paced heist movie, here are eight things we know about Ocean's 8. Location, location, location. The trailer reveals almost immediately that the movie is set at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Not only is it taking place there, but it focuses on the museum's annual highly anticipated event, the Met Gala. What is the Met Gala? It's a black tie affair and one of the biggest nights in fashion outside of Fashion Week, and it serves as a fundraiser for the museum's Costume Institute. The star-studded event has come to be known as the Oscars of the East Coast, but while the evening is full of glam and glitz, it's also serious business. The 2016 gala raised $13.5 million for for the Institute and consistently hits comparable numbers each year. A single ticket costs $30,000. With all that money in the room, it makes the perfect place to center the ocean spinoff. And so far, here's what we know about the plot. The Master Plan. How does the plot of this movie line up with the three previous films, Ocean's 11, Ocean's 12, and Ocean's 13? Those three films, which came out in 2001, 2004, and 2007 respectively, centered around Danny Ocean, played by George Clooney, robbing high-stakes Las Vegas casinos. Danny, recently released from prison, assembles a crew of criminal specialists to help him plan and perform the heists. By the third movie, his team has grown in size and stolen millions of dollars from Sin City establishments. So, where does the franchise go from here? Cut to Ocean's 8. We're hightailing out of Las Vegas and Nevada all together and find ourselves in a cafe on Manhattan's swanky Upper East Side. There we see Danny Ocean's sister, Debbie Ocean, played by Sandra Bullock. She's also just been released from prison, where she spent the last five years, eight months, and twelve days. In that time, she devised a plan to pull off the heist of the century, stealing a necklace worth $150 million off the neck of Daphne Kluger while at the Met Gala. She, too, has to assemble a team of criminal masterminds to pull off a robbery on one of the most, if not the most, photographed nights of the year. So as these movies tend to be just as star-studded as the Met Gala itself, you're probably wondering who is going to make up the band of ultra-stealthy criminals this time around? The Criminal Masterminds. As we mentioned earlier, the cast of Ocean's 8 is completely ridiculous in the best way possible. The roles these stars take on is pretty much the franchise's biggest selling point. Some of the standouts of past films include the likes of Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and Don Cheadle, just to name a few. The spin-off is no less impressive. Sandra Bullock is the mastermind behind the heist, playing a member of the infamous Ocean family. Upon being released from prison, she immediately gets in touch with Lou, played by Kate Blanchett, her right hand and partner in crime. Together, they assemble their all-female team. Mindy Kaling plays Amita, the skilled jeweler looking to escape from the watchful eye and apartment of her mother. Sarah Paulson is Tammy, a suburban mom whose skills are not yet known and who hesitantly re enters the criminal world hearing how much money she stands to make. Rapper and actor Aquafina takes on the role of Constance, a slick city con artist with quick hands. Rihanna plays Nineball, a tech whiz whose real name, should you ask, is Nineball, thank you very much. And finally, Helena Bonham Carter is fashion designer Rose, who's down on her luck and hoping to change that. Their target? Daphne Kluger, an A-list celebrity played by IRL A-list celebrity Anne Hathaway. Kluger is the one rocking the necklace at the gala that they're looking to snag. The cast alone stirred a lot of buzz, being a spin-off of a popular franchise and an all-female ensemble, but director Gary Ross has experience with kick-ass female leads, which brings us to why we got the cast in the first place. Let's hear it for the ladies. It's uncommon to see a cast of women take the lead in a heist movie. Sure, we sometimes get the sexy martial artist assassin character or the housewife turned bad, but Ocean's 8 puts a group of highly skilled women together front and center. Sandra Bullock herself had a lot to do with the premise of the movie, saying that she always wants what the guys get to have, like an action movie, a sexy heist film, or a comedy. So she told Jerry Weintraub, the film's original producer, that she didn't care who was in it as long as the ladies are all lovers of women. And director Gary Ross was definitely here for that vision as well. He'd directed strong female leads before. Before directing The Hunger Games, people warned him that it would never be successful because audiences don't want to see this kind of female protagonist. Which is, you know, demonstrably false. Fortunately, Ross didn't listen, and as we know, The Hunger Games did extremely well. It was this kind of forward thinking that inspired Ocean's 8. Ross said it was interesting and important to, quote, invade the terrain that always had an off-limits sign, and that it would be great to see all of these women do something that had always been the province of men, end quote. With the help of newcomer Olivia Milch, Ross wrote the Ocean's 8 script. So that is why we're getting this cast of unusual suspects. Invitation only, special cameos. Since this movie takes place at the Met Gala, to recreate the high-profile event, you need high-profile celebrity guests. Kim Kardashian and her half-sister Kendall Jenner were spotted on set filming a scene last year. Matt Damon and Carl Reiner are both reprising their roles 
as Linus Caldwell and Saul Bloom, so it'll be interesting to see how they fit back into the new movie. Katie Holmes is set to appear as well, and dished about how fun filming the movie was. She said, quote, It's going to be a great female caper film. It won't disappoint. Even late-night TV host James Corden made an appearance in the second trailer, and seems to be an associate of Anne Hathaway's. Other cameos include One Direction's Zayn Malik, designers Alexander Wang and Zach Posen, model Haley Baldwin, professional tennis player Maria Sharapova, musician Tyga, actor Olivia Munn, and member of the band Pussy Riot, Nadia Tolakonikova. One could assume that these cameos are all playing themselves as celebrities at the Met Gala itself, but it's anyone's guess. At least as of the recording of this video, if you're watching it in the future, the movie's already been released. But hey, maybe we're gonna see Kim Kardashian flex her acting chops? And alright, those of you familiar with the gala are probably thinking to yourself at this point, there seems to be one cameo missing that would make this whole list exceptionally perfect. You're right, and don't worry, Anna Wintour, the editor-in-chief of Vogue, makes an appearance in the film as well. Wintour, who's been in her position for the last 30 years, hosts the famed fashion gala every year, so it's fitting, pun intended, to have her show up in the movie. And you know who co-hosted the 2018 gala with her? None other than Nineball, I mean Rihanna. So technically, the actual Met Gala this year was sort of like a preview for the movie coming out on June 8th, just a month later. Though I don't think any actual heists were pulled off at the Met Gala this year. Unless it was super successful and we just never heard about it. Behind the scenes. We've covered who's in the movie, but what about who's responsible for creating it? The first three Oceans movies were directed by Steven Soderbergh, one of the most influential filmmakers working today. He's known for creating a voyeuristic perspective and elevating marginalized storylines and characters through his filmmaking, which helped make the earlier Oceans movies so iconic and engaging. For the spin-off, though, he's putting on a different hat and producing the film. By now you know that it's Gary Ross directing the film, but who exactly is he? Well, he's the director behind movies like The Hunger Games, Pleasantville, and Seabiscuit, and he's also known for being the writer of Big. Ross is an old friend and collaborator of Soderbergh and has helped out on the previous Oceans movies. We can definitely expect to recognize the stylistic ties between this movie and the previous ones. He considers himself to be extending the tone of the trilogy. Ross didn't only direct it, but co-wrote the script with Olivia Milch, who has written the films Dude and Queen and Country, the latter of which has yet to come out. Milch is the first woman to be credited for writing an Oceans movie, and it's pretty awesome to think that women are helping make this movie at all levels. Girls just want to have fun. Now that we know who's responsible for making the movie, we can focus on some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. What's it like putting all of these hugely successful women in the same cast? There have been a ton of interviews with the cast in anticipation of the movie, and they've given us a good sense of how much fun everyone was having on set. Sarah Paulson said one of the hardest parts of being on set was not singing Rihanna's songs while sitting next to Rihanna. She constantly had to keep herself in check, but was super relieved to learn her other castmates were struggling with the same self-control. Sandra Bullock was definitely guilty of humming Umbrella next to the pop star, though. Aquafina, the greenest of the group, was understandably nervous. Before she landed this role, she had done work on MTV's Girl Code and had a career as a rapper, but the cast embraced her. She said her castmates were, quote, incredibly warm and welcoming, to the point where they convinced me I was their equal. She also made a point to note that there was very little drama, saying, people like to say that there are cat fights because they're jealous, whereas you would never say that about an all-male cast. That pretty much squashes any rumors right there, doesn't it? Between the main cast, the cameos, and acting out the expertly written script, Ocean's 8 must have been incredibly fun to film. Also, there surely must have been one cathartic Rihanna sing-along, right? Go to karaoke, bring Rihanna, have her sing one of her own songs, good times had by all? Let's hope so and move on to our final fact about the movie, which is... We don't know who the eighth person is! We know that this is supposed to be eight facts about Ocean's 8, but the truth is that the eighth fact isn't a fact at all. It's actually about something we don't know. And if you're confused, take another look at the poster. We know Anne Hathaway isn't a member of the titular Ocean's 8, so removing her, let's practice our counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Debbie Ocean's team, as it stands now from the trailer, is only comprised of seven people total, and she even says herself that she only needs seven people for the job. But Constance, Nineball, Rose, Lou, Tammy, Amita, and Debbie don't add up to the magic numbers, so who is the eighth person? Well, there are a few guesses as to who this eighth person could be. Perhaps Debbie's brother makes a surprise appearance and helps her out with the heist. Or does James Corden's cameo in the trailer suggest he has a bigger role in the movie and might be working as a double agent? Then there's the possibility that Daphne Daphne Kluger, Anne Hathaway's character, actually is in on the heist. As one website pointed out, we do see Daphne looking quite mischievous in a brown fur coat in the trailer. Is that hinting at something? Only time will tell. But personally, considering that this would be the most telegraphed twist in the history of filmmaking ever, I'm willing to bet that this isn't the case. Regardless, for right now, the person who makes this an octet remains unknown. Of course, there's always the possibility that we haven't even seen the person who rounds out the crew yet. The movie's IMDb lists Dakota Fanning as having a part 
part, but there's been no indication of what her part might be. If any of you out there are feeling like being internet sleuths, maybe sharpen up your skills to figure it out and then apply to be part of Debbie Ocean's team. Surely they could use someone like you. It'll be a good way to pass the time until you see the movie. It ought to be one for the books, and these criminals ought to be ones for the bookings. At least, if they get caught. Here's hoping they don't and that this is the beginning in a trend of kick-ass female-led heist films. Once again, I'm Jacob, and thanks for watching 8 Facts About Ocean's 8. Who do you think is going to be the last member of Debbie Ocean's team? What other kind of all-female cast movies would you like to see? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to ring that bell icon to become part of our notification squad, and of course, subscribe to Cinematica for more videos about your favorite movies and TV shows.